Good evening and welcome to the Finkin Show. Our dedicated Canary shenanigans that assumed there was no there was sorry, that assumed there was more chance of Horatio Nelson joining Reading on loan this month. Shut it, you. Uh, at the Woolpack Public House in the centre of Norwich. We are live, of course, and over the next 30 minutes or so, uh, we will discuss City's superb win over Birmingham, enjoy the look of the current championship picture, hear exclusively from Canaries goalkeeper Kit Tim Cruel, not Kim Truel, uh, give you the chance to win one of Ed's books. Now, that is exciting. I uh, wonder what happened this week in Norwich City history and prepare for those most hospitable of blades. There's also the usual fun and games as well as the return of our sort of loved game, Flip the Bird. And we do all of this in the company of tonight's wonderful guests. They are author of many a canary's tale, the delightful Ed Cousins Lake and former Musty, Mustard TV colleague... Musty, musty colleague, <laughs> much more accurate, and internet forager, I don't know what that means either, the lovely Ryan Livermore. Great to have you both on, gentlemen. What a pleasure. How are you both? Ed, I'll start with you. I'm excellent, thank you. Yeah, brilliant to be up in Norwich and amongst yellow and green friends, what can I say? This is it, because you're from the area, but you do have to make the trek from I south do. to I get do. here. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, from an area that supports another team. Yeah. Which one? Uh, the team that's top of the first division actually at the moment. Oh, Portsmouth. oh we're not going to yeah. talk about them. No, not, <laughs> it's no. not going to happen. I've had that. I've had but that. Believe me. Someone, yeah. someone did say that they haven't picked up a point since the no, FA Cup game. That's no. a, I can't believe no, that. I don't both. know how that's happened. Uh, and Ryan, thank you A for coming in and B in that hat. Thank you very much. No, it's my Peaky Blinders hat. <laughs> Are they Welsh? <laughs> oh, God knows. <laughs> not seen. Uh, it's lovely to see you. Are you well? Yes, very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Cracking stuff. So uh, we are live once again on Pink and com the pink and facebook page twitter periscope and youtube all simultaneously and over the course of the show we want to hear from you be it on tom tribal's return to form getting a special welcome from leeds uh, the return of chris wilder nelson Oliveira's departure and especially in light of ed's presence on tonight's show we want to know your favorite norris city book and why? And it, it doesn't have to be and one of mine. It doesn't have to be one of Ed's. Of course, of course not. Uh, so you can get all those through to us uh, down here on the pub, uh, in the pub, live, on all the numerous feeds we've got going. Uh, so simply post your words on either the Pinken Facebook page feed, the YouTube chat box, uh, or you can reply on the Pinken Twitter or uh, post a comment on Periscope. I think I just about managed to keep track of all those, <laughs> possibly. Bear with me. But um, get those into me and I'll do my best to keep track of them. Right, in Chris Wilder style, let's crack on by uh, bringing Onel Hernandez and Wesley Moulihan into the fold with, this is your moment, Ed, this week's Norwich City headlines. <laughs> Lovely. Good, good, strong start. Singing the blues. An awesome first half is too hot for Birmingham to handle as Norwich made the point they don't plan to go anywhere in this season's promotion race. <laughs> One EFL of a letter. City lead the chase to find out exactly what Leeds have been up to over Spygate and anything else. Eleven clubs have stated they want full disclosure from the authorities' investigation. Norwich have not, let me say that again, not asked for any sort of punishment, including points deductions. That seems a little hard for some to grasp further north, as they prepare to welcome Norwich with banners and all sorts in a fortnight's time. <coughs> O'Neill's gone to Argos. Uh, plugs galore as Hernandez admits his love for the UK's often underrated catalogue store. Uh, you imagine City's number 25 will never have to buy a cheap four-way power extension again. <coughs> off Oliveira, it does work. <laughs> off off Oliveira. Nelson finally makes his move, go, going to Reading on loan with the chance to be the Royals' main man, keep them in the division and remind everyone there's a decent striker with a year left on his Norwich deal and the Canaries still don't want him anymore. And finally... <coughs> The youth of today. City's under-18s and their new coach, Paul Williams, see their FA Youth Cup run end at Preston, while the under-23s draw 2-2 with Leicester in the Premier League International Cup, playing some lovely football. Carlton Morris's comeback also ends with a horrendous tackle uh, on him, that is, and a worrying wait over what looked a lot of damage. As they say, 24 hours is a long time in football. Top work, Ed. Well done. And I'd say 24 hours is a long time in football. It certainly is a long time. Um, and worth a shout out for William Hondemark here because the 19 year old midfielder signed from Irish side uh, Drogheda. Drogheda. Uh, Drogheda, I think. Paddy did try and tell me how to pronounce it. I haven't got it right. Drogheda, uh, who, who hadn't even been um, and. Uh, 
uh, William Hondemark hadn't even been announced as a Norwich City signing, only to turn out for half an hour on Monday against Leicester under 23s and then a full 90 up at Preston for City's under 18s the following night. And in the middle of that, he had to get there. So um, fair play and an intriguing signing, actually, uh, for sure. We'll keep an eye on him, of course, as he develops for the 23s for the rest of this season. On to first team matters, which is, of course, where our greatest focus is. Uh, what a great weekend that was for it, Norwich City. It just, just kept happening, didn't it? Everything was falling into place. A good win, a comfortable win, then everybody else not winning. Yeah, life was good. It's one of those occasions where it's nice to play on a Friday because everything went so well afterwards. It makes a Saturday actually quite pleasant every now and again. <laughs> I had the weekend off, so I was loving it. Yeah. Did, did you enjoy seeing those scores come through on Saturday, Ryan? Yes, yeah, I think so. Um, there is, it's certainly, it puts more impetus, impetus on the other teams to go and do something. Mm. And it's nice to come in. I know West Brom won at Bolton on the Monday, but it's still nice to have that cushion going into what is a big um, game at the weekend, really. It's a big spell this coming up. Um, I thought it was interesting with Birmingham. Gary Monk kind of made the point that Birmingham weren't at their races as they normally are. It's probably their worst performance in a long time. They didn't have their normal positional discipline. They were poor defensively. Norwich deserve a bit of credit for that because they did seem to pull them and push them all over the place. We do see whenever we win a game, it always seems to be the opposition's worst performance for a long time. We had this in the Premier League and we're getting it now. And um, But I think if he was honest enough to say we just outplayed them, it wouldn't reflect well on them. So he's... He's sort of doing damage limitation, isn't he? Yeah, indeed. And I mean, Birmingham are top six contenders, realistically. We'll look yeah. at the table later, of course. But no, they're top eight. They were on the fringes of the playoff picture and we've probably been hoping to push on into it. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, Gary Monk's done a very good job there. Um, they're a very rigid side as well. And as bad as they might have been, you have to beat what's put in front of you. And I thought Norwich, the first 25, 30 minutes were excellent, mm. albeit they conceded straight away after they scored the first <laughs> goal. But uh, aside from that, I thought they were excellent. And the fluidity of their play in Birmingham as static as they were, were made to look so by some of the movement in the final third. I think Jake Watson would appreciate that comment, good stuff. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a fair point, isn't it? The Norwich conceded a goal, you know, having got themselves ahead, and I was immediately thinking, ah, oh, Derby, you know, mm. you've got yourself mm. ahead and you're just throwing it away. So actually the strength of character to reassert themselves it's pretty much straight away after that. Yeah, no, totally. Um, it was at the Derby game as well, and there was a sense the minute the Derby scored from that set piece, you kind of felt that mm. the squeaky bum time, particularly towards the end of the half, and if Norwich going to do that two times in a row, then you start to really question where if they're the team who's going to fall away at this stage in the season. But again, character was superb, and it's a super goal by Vrancic to get them back in front as well. But again, it's not letting it get to you because it was it was poor defending it was like Ben Godfrey needs to get tighter Tim Cole's beaten at the near post and then you know you can easily let that rock you but they they didn't and they were excellent from that point onwards and there's a few times this season where I've been watching them Ed and I've just thought you know what this is a really good side if I was watching this game without you know being uh, you know uh, objective in terms of analyzing it I'd, I'd see the way Norwich are playing and just think oh that's, that's enjoyable to watch. Yeah, and I think what you're seeing now is a lot of fans of opposition teams are starting to say, yeah, Norwich have got a good team. Um, they're good to watch. They've got some good players and, and we're, we're impressed. And um, I was chatting to somebody earlier in the week and I, I think, in a way, and I don't want this taken the wrong way at all. <laughs> but, uh, As if that would yeah, happen, yeah, Ed. I'm going to disqualify myself there. We are almost a Premier League team in waiting the way we're playing the game at the moment. We're not a championship team. We're, we're playing, and this was illustrated last year, when we played Arsenal and Chelsea and we looked the part. So, um, yeah, bring it on. It's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, I think before Wolves almost, people would have said it's really hard to play the way that... I know there's differences between how Norwich and Wolves have played, but I don't want to liken them too much to each other because Wolves were runaway leaders last year. Um, but there is an essence now that you can actually have success in the Championship playing that brand of mm. football, whereas I think maybe three or four years ago, it was, you've got to do the proper ugly stuff and that's probably just going to be enough on its own No, totally I, I think you, out of the top six not to single them out but Middlesbrough I think arguably play the worst football but the other five teams in there I think all the good footballing signs and they're doing things the right way you know I think Leeds there was a stat the other day that Leeds as well have in one, the one squad in nine years or something they've not had a academy player in so these teams are bringing through youngsters and they're playing football the right way as yeah, well definitely. which is the most important thing mm. I mean I, I qualify my own comment just then with the fact that Cardiff went up last year playing pretty horrendous football mm. so there we go um, we did talk a lot about the Spygate um, situation with Leeds and obviously a lot's happened since then I don't really want to talk about it a lot this week because it's all going to be what it will be and of course we're going to have next week to really talk about it ahead of the Leeds game but um, it does make everything quite tasty, doesn't it, and quite raw. How do you see it, Eddie? Would you have rather 
Norwich hadn't said anything and it had all been kept away because it is going to pile a little bit of pressure on. Yeah, I can see I, why Norwich are doing that. They they yeah. clearly want it to be resolved properly and they probably want to know what's gone on. That's what all these clubs want. They want to know what Leeds have been up to. Well, we're all about marginal gains now, aren't we, at Norwich? Hence the uh, infamous dressing room. And um, I would have preferred it if we'd have just stood back and thought, you know what, let this carry on. We're not going to say anything. We're not going to comment. We're not going to get involved. We're just going to be who we are and focus on winning our games. But... If there's a slightest chance of affecting something by kicking up a fuss, <laughs> then you're going to say something. And maybe that's a psychological reason they've said something. It's a marginal gain thing again. Don't worry, we'll, um, I'll ask the guys a question next time they walk through. because <laughs> It's actually a shorter trip to the bar, but there we go. Um, uh, Ryan, yeah, Spygate, what have you made of it all? It's a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you, like, it's, it's nothing like it. Certainly, since I've been following football, nothing like that has really happened. And it boils down to, is it... You know, is, is it ethical in the context of the game? And no, not particularly. But then it, it's, it's happened. It's, it's done now. We can do is move on and beat them. Really, if that's the that's the case. I'm interested that they were supposedly at Colney before the uh, August game. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I thought Colney was quite tight to get into. Well, yeah. And I think, to be honest, that's what some of the clubs want to look at because it might not be that. Who is spying? Is it uh, is it Leeds employees, yeah. or are they saying are they getting someone on the phone well, and saying, "Oh, you it. work there. We'll we'll check you some yeah, money. Can you exactly. let us know what's happening?" So yeah. I think that's why you can appreciate the clubs want to know what's happened, yeah. so they can deal with it. You and can't just turn up at Colney and stand on the end of the pitch and watch the first team train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As we know, if they'd ask, they'd say no. Yeah. So exactly. that's kind of the whole yeah. point. But you know, we're going around in circles. Um, just to reiterate, Norwich are not asking for a points deduction. So if you're getting ready with your welcome Lee, uh, welcome Norwich banners next weekend, just think about that maybe. Before you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good man. That's the way. That's the way, man. Uh, okay, so um, that's all good. Uh, Nelson Oliveira, I did just want to touch on as well. I thought it would never happen. I certainly thought it would never happen to Reading. Um, so they've finally got in a situation where I guess Reading having um, Jose G- Gomez as their boss. Uh, he's Portuguese. That no doubt helps. And it's, it strikes me as probably in the situation a good mix. Now that they've managed to convince Nelson to go and play there, which I'm sure would have been a big part of it. Yeah, I think that's the only way it was going to happen as well because the guy's not played first team football since what, April last year and without sounding harsh, he's not been particularly good since September, October. So I think it was unlikely a team would come in and pay whatever Norwich were asking. So I think a loan move seems feasible. Like you said, the Portuguese connection's there as well. And Reading as well, they're not exactly going to go out and buy them because they don't know what division they're going to be in next season. You know, they're second bottom at the moment. So I think, imagine, you know, Norwich would get a sizable loan fee for that and a chunk of his wages will be paid by Reading so I think it's the, the right move all round really yeah I think it certainly is a sizable proportion of his wages um, which is obviously really beneficial for, for Norwich and we'll see where his future lies afterwards I yeah, suppose I mean we've got over the point where it's a bit of an, a shame that he's not involved because we know he's a good player he will probably oh, he go and score goals right? yeah yeah I mean I noticed he said in the interview yesterday didn't he? he's feeling the love at Reading and it just made me think of Yaya Tori and the birthday cake you know <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Maybe you got a signing cake. We don't well, know. You do never we? know. Could have done. I'll have to ask him. There we go. Brilliant stuff. Um, we've got some questions and comments, so let's try and go through some of these, shall we? Um, Elliot Hatton says, "Looking forward to the show ahead of a massive game against Sheffield United." That's, it certainly is. These are on YouTube. Thanks for your message, Elliot. Keep them coming. Um, Robert Fenn feel like our next two games will define our finishing place in the league two huge games Neil Jones great to see City back at their best versus Birmingham should have confidence for Saturday Sheffield United are overrated might get stuck into that in a moment actually uh, Neil um, and West Ham Sam hello there West Ham Sam I really want Norwich to go up as they play good football whereas Sheffield United our Route 1 stuff. Well, I'm not going to argue with that. Keep your messages coming in. Uh, get your stuff on. Actually, that's a bit harsh on Sheffield United. But I, I did say I'd try and keep out of hot water with Sheffield United and Leeds fans. I'm not doing very well so far. Leeds fans, it's all good humour. You know, you're right. Uh, so, all good. Uh, OK, so let's move on, shall we? Uh, earlier today, my esteemed colleague, Paddy Davitt, and uh, video maestro sat behind the camera there, Tony Thrussell, were allowed in at Colney. They were allowed in. They didn't have to spy. Uh, to catch oh, I've done it again, haven't I? Uh, to catch up with a key connection. Canaries performer. How big are the next two games you think to? Um, to be fair, yes, on paper, obviously, they're huge, but I think every game, the next 18 are huge. Um, I don't think we should get too carried away uh, with it all. I think we've had an amazing season up to now. To be challenging um, for to win the league and promotion is, is amazing. Um, 
but yeah, Sheffield United at home um, and Leeds away, Ipswich at home. I think we just have to get through uh, unscratched and then uh, I think uh, we can have a real, yeah, exciting last 15 games leading up to the end. Uh, brilliant stuff. Now, you can um, uh, catch much more from um, Paddy's interview with Tim Quill in the Eastern Daily Press, Norwich Evening News, uh, and of course all over our digital channels, audio and visual, over the coming days, including the Pinken app and Pinken.com. Uh, um, some see him as the perfect for the job in terms of goalkeeper under Daniel Farker. Others think he's perhaps the least strong link in a very decent chain. It might be a nice way of putting it. How do you guys see Tim Krull? Uh, I bit of a goalkeeper's union here. I used to play in goal when I was younger. This um, is the way, right? Love way. it. Good work. Way. Good work. So I, He'll appreciate I, this, Tim. <laughs> I, I think there aren't too many better in terms of experience. And I think it's not just the, the shot-stopping element of the game. It's what he brings to that defence. Because there were times when, I think the back four at the moment, the average age is, what, 24, 25? And then you need someone behind them who's experienced, who's been there and done it on so many different stages. And... I feel the way he comes off his line and claims crosses and the way he's always communicating, it puts everyone in front of him at ease. And yeah, there's the odd shot like West Brom start of the season which has slipped and he should have done better. But I think on the whole, the experiences, you can't, you can't really buy that. You, know, you have to earn it and he's certainly been there and done it. And I think he's the perfect foil for that back four. What do you reckon, Ed? Yeah, agree completely. He's probably the best keeper in the Championship. Or certainly not far off. He's experienced. He's he's got authority. Players respect him for what he's done in the game, and he's played in the World Cup. For goodness' sake, you know, there's not many Norwich people that have played for Norwich who have played in the World Cup. I'm a big fan. I hope we keep him, and I hope he's there next season. Can't brush over the errors, though. I mean, there have been some pretty prime errors. There have been errors, but you, you watch any game of football. All goalkeepers are prone to making errors, even the Man City goalkeeper and the Liverpool goalkeeper, who everybody was revering at the start of the season. He's been making errors. It's, it's part of the game. They make errors. I think Tim might have said that himself. You'll see all that in his interview later. Let's touch on the uh, youth team, shall we? Let's say Norwich already out of the FA Youth Cup. I say already. I think it was a fourth round stage, so normally you get to Christmas beyond Christmas. That's, that's half decent because Norwich have won it in the past. The under-23s in different uh, results this season, but... We have to kind of bear in mind, I suppose, the young players that have come through to the first team. It's probably understandable that those sides are maybe going to bobble along a little bit at times this year, especially in terms of the under-18s, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there's somebody, I, I've forgotten their name, but somebody said earlier this week in a, in a column, I think in one of the uh, our papers, um, if you're winning all of your games at that level, something's wrong. <laughs> and, and I completely agree. It's, it's about performance every time. And... Um, it's a shame that you know the, the under-18 team have got turned over a few times this season, but it's really about preparing them for the first team, and you, you can't worry too much about results. It's how they're playing. The clip of the game yesterday, the goal that's been on, are beautiful. Yeah, from the under-23s yeah. indeed. And it's interesting to see such a good team goal when, as you say, they have shifted the dynamic yeah. to see if these players can d d maybe shift the focus onto their individual development rather yeah. than creating a team. Because let's be honest, you're never going to chuck all 11 into the first team mix right, straight away. Um, Got to touch on it, I suppose. Anel Hernandez's love affair with Argos. Uh, when you read those quotes, Ryan, what what exact emotion went through your mind? Well, this one, like it's, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. Do you see they've they've got in touch with him and they're sending yeah. him a signed Argos catalogue by the CEO? Yes. Like he loves the infrastructure of mm. Argos. He doesn't mm. love the fact you can go in there and buy a TV and an exercise ball. He likes the infrastructure. It makes no sense. It's Lads, please. I don't get it. I'm sorry. It's it's funny. It's hilarious. But why send him a signed? Would you want a signed Argos catalogue? I have to say I wouldn't. No, would you? No, I can't say. I can't well, say. Well, maybe Onel would though. We know the problem with the Argos catalogue as well. It's out of date in a few months' time. Well, is he going to get? Is he going to get yeah. a constant stream of updated? Stuff? It's a difficult question. Hopefully, Onel will answer what it in Argos, his next interview. What Argos need to do is to offer him somebody to put the furniture together that you buy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Particularly hard to put together. But maybe that's not Argos's fault. That's enough coverage of Argos for <laughs> one evening and probably one lifetime right there. Uh, let's have a look at some of your messages. I'm going to head over to Periscope now, if I may. Spud's been in touch. Nice to see you watching on, on the Periscope, Spud. Uh, obviously love Ed's books, he says. So it's a good start it's a good start uh, but I do have happy memories of City fan Kevin Baldwin's book in the 1990s have not seen Kevin for years that's very true actually I'd love to get Kevin Baldwin on this show I don't know if he's still in London Capital Canaries gig maybe um, but yeah I, I liked his book it, which one was it was it um, 
I can't remember the one in ninety six seven I think or the, the ninety two three were the two yeah, years yeah, he yeah, did weren't yeah, they the two yeah, Mark Walker yeah, he's, amazing um, seasons he is in London I've seen him a couple of times he is based in London at the moment they're both great books definitely there we go um, and Ves Vespasian, Vespasian, not Verstappen, Vespasian. Uh, hashtag Bill Bailey and the Lamented Book of Dreams. Oh, Laminated. <laughs> He's corrected himself. Lamented Book of Dreams sounds amazing. Uh, laminated Book of Dreams. I'm not. Is that a football book? I'm not sure. I don't even know if Bill Bailey's a football Argos fan. Catalog. Argos catalogue. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, that's. We know that's Ona Hernandez's favourite book. So uh, there we go. Brilliant stuff. Keep those messages coming in. We want to know your favourite Norwich City book. And anything else you want to discuss, plus because clearly there's quite a lot going on at the moment. But uh, right now, ha, you know what time it is. Don't groan, Ed. Yes, it's Flip the Bird, the game that keeps coming back like a bad smell. Uh, last time out, uh, which was in fact a fortnight ago, Kevin Piper and Richard Jeffrey did debut battle, Rich taking the honours 7-6 and both earning healthy entries into this season's standings. Tonight, both Ryan and Ed embark on their own flipping initiations. A shake of the hands there, beautiful to see. Can I just quickly say, I've had friends say they will disown me if I get one, just one. Right. If I get less than one. I mean, that would be pretty awful, <laughs> I can't be honest, <laughs> if you get one. Uh, but there we go, you know, never say never, hey Ryan? That's hey. the way to do it. So oh. there's your piles, oh, so to speak. <laughs> Don't laugh, Dan. Um, we'll put Anel Hernandez there. Uh, there's a script on the table. We don't use that. I don't know why we've got that there. Uh, so, uh, the rules, of course. In short, the guys have 30 seconds to flip as many bar mats as possible, adding one to their flipping pile with each successful one-handed catch. Both scores will find their way onto our leaderboard while the winner tonight will get a much prize selfie with Wesley Mulahan. Are you ready, gentlemen? Yes. You clearly yes. are ready. We're Danny, ready. ready with the time? Yeah. Go on. Three, two, one, go. And away we go. It's a strong start and both claim catches. Ryan being very... Uh, that's okay, just play, take, uh, take another two and start again, Ed. Uh, Ryan, quite erratic. It's not one for the purists, if you watch it. But keep going. Don't, don't let me concentrate. Uh, d ditch your concentration. Uh, not really, but you know, probably would. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Ed, Ed's, uh, Ed's threatening my cappuccino, which is obviously very dangerous. There we go. Uh, try and catch it up. Up on the up. On the up, uh, Ryan. I, I, should, I shouldn't coach. Well, not like that. Uh, too late for that. Ed's ticking along very nicely. Ryan has got more than one. Oh, which is literally the only plus point have friends guys that's the most important thing <laughs> not getting disowned no but you did get let's move on Michael yeah it was a two yeah. Ed how'd you get on uh, four four well that's not too bad that's same as Simon Lappin well I'm very pleased about that well there we go yep Ed moves uh, level on well was it oh, Simon Lappin last year We've got to get Simon on this year, it's but that, that's fine. Territory, but... Um, David Hannan and Ian Clark so a pair of lovely writers and uh, EDP columnists um well, you're out on your own, Ryan. That's the most exciting thing. Um, but, but Paddy David got two last year. So, you know, fair play. That's pretty decent company there. Well done. Uh, we will sort our selfie after the show. Uh, in the meantime, should we play this thing again, Dan? Sure. Right I'm back on. Uh, Jake Watson has been in touch. You might remember him from Dizzy Penalties and looking really lanky with a beard. Um, uh, come on the show, by the way. Jake, next time you're in Norwich, no excuses. This is an open invitation. Uh, he says he didn't know Cillian, or Chillian Murphy was on the show tonight. I, you'd take that, wouldn't you? Yeah, lovely. Lovely looking man, Gilly Murphy. Yeah. What a legend as well. What a legend. Brilliant. Okay, so um, as we go to all this trouble to get our guests in, including Ryan, uh, it seems only right we also spend a little bit of QT with them. So away we go. Ed, mm. we know you've written a stream of Norwich City books. I have. What is right now the big projects of, for, for books that you've got on, uh, okay. on the Well, I've been off Norwich for a while, but I'm now back on them again. Oh, well, uh, hang on, hang on. Whoa. What were you doing? What were you writing books on away from I Norwich? We should talk about books that have nothing to do with Norwich. Well, just maybe sum them up really briefly uh, well, well, in a word. <laughs> one, about, one about all the ruins and follies in East Anglia. Oh. And I've done the uh, life story of a Red Arrow pilot. Wow, yeah. that's good stuff. Okay, back on the football. Yeah. Um, what, what, yeah, what's in the pipeline? Uh, the big one coming out in the summer is Peter Mendham's okay. life story, which I'm working on with Peter at the moment. Fabulous story. Can't wait to can't wait to finish it. How um how tricky has that been to deal with as a subject? Because of course we all know what Peter Mendham did in his football ca career. We all mm. know what he's been through since then as well. Yes, absolutely, and it's all it's dealt with in the book. Peter's talking about it very openly, very honestly, and um, I admire him for his courage in doing so. And it's all a very big part of the book that in his time in prison, it's all there. Wow, that will be a fascinating read. Do you have a favourite book that you have put together? 
or it, it might even be the Peter Mendel one, I guess. Um, my favourite one, I think, is probably Fantasy Football, which is the one I did about the 92-93 season. Of course, I interviewed 10 different players for that to get their feelings on that season. Uh, that's my favourite book of mine. My favourite Norwich-related book is probably the book Karen Buchanan did with you and Roberts. I do like that one. Ah, oh, fantastic. So did you co... Did you, oh, so that's so the one that you wrote was the one that Karen wrote? Uh, I didn't write it, but it's Sorry, my, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's my favourite Norwich book. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, you should have asked you that, of yeah. course. Yeah. Oh, that is a cracker, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Most great. definitely. I should say, our thoughts are with Karen. I think she lost her yes, mum yeah, recently. Our thoughts are with you, Karen. Love you, Karen. Um, come on the show as well. That would be lovely. Um, is there one, this is a trickier one question, is there a book you dearly love to do? The one that's sort of simmering, oh, love to get that. Or, or write it on a subject. I mean, I guess you can just write it yourself if you want to. Well, the, the one I've wanted to do for a long time is Ken Brown's. And I've been in touch with Ken and that is a possibility. So, that so would be awesome. watch this space, yeah. Oh, fantastic. What, what a man Ken Brown is, by the way. Proper legend. Yeah, yeah, Proper legend. Uh, okay, well, I tell you what, let's tee up our bo- your, our book competition. Um, this is your chance to answer a question set by Ed, who loves a bit of trivia, no, by the way. And he's set a question especially for us. And uh, if you can get, if you can answer the question, then uh, get your answers in, and you can win. What did we decide in the end? <laughs> can you remember? It, 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 will, <laughs> it will be one of my books, and one of your uh, books. Uh, I will, I will give you a list, and you can pick one, and I will send oh, it to you. There we go. There we go. So the, a, a, choice mm, a choice of of one of Ed's books, and obviously some prize catches in there. Brilliant stuff. Okay. Well, in that case, Ed, over to you. What is your question? Okay. Well, with reference to the game on Saturday against uh, the Blades. Norwich and Sheffield United have had four players represent them as goalkeepers. Name all four of them. They've played in goal for Norwich and Sheffield United. Name and all this four is since the 1980s. Since the 1980s. Four goalkeepers that yeah. have played first team clubs. games yeah. for Norwich and Sheffield United. Name them. Name them. And then you will win a copy of Ed's book. Fantastic stuff. If you know the answer to that, get your entries in via email, please, to... I think we've got a, a, a strap for it. Thanks, Dan. Top work. Thepinken at archant.co.uk. Hopefully I've said the same thing that's on the strap. Uh, get those in before kickoff on Saturday. There you go. Before kickoff between Norwich City and Sheffield United, get those answers in, and the winner will win one of a selection of Ed's books. What a top prize. Are you going to sign it as well, Ed? If they wish. If they wish. There you go. I only sign if asked. I <laughs> yeah, never do it automatically. Enough. Well, I might ask on their behalf, so brilliant <laughs> stuff. Uh, Ryan, we did have loads of fun on Mustard. What a joy it was. I still think someone should make a film out of the journey of Mustard TV. It was that awesome. Uh, what have you been up to much? Uh, that is a question. Have you been up to much since? What have you done yes. since? You've done interweb stuff interweb since. Interweb stuff, yes. Yeah, so I'm part of a uh, YouTube channel called Barshans. Oh which is um, a bit cell- crazy from what I noticed. It is a bit crazy. Um, we release a video every Friday at 5 p.m. and it's myself, a YouTuber called Stuart Ashton, a YouTuber called Barry Lewis, who has a, had a channel called My Virgin Kitchen, and a couple of other guys. We just, essentially, we get we got paid to muck about. It was brilliant. Muck about every once every month, put videos out on a Friday, and it's um, got an okay following, which is quite nice. Yeah, that does sound like good fun. Um, well, I did want to ask, if we brought back dizzy penalties, do you reckon we could get you involved in that? I'm going to ask you live on air. Yes. Jake, Jake would probably appreciate it. Let's get Jake involved as well. Jake, Jake, Jake will get involved. Yeah. He might have outgrown us, bless him. Uh, literally and metaphorically. Uh, well, I'll sort of hold you to that. I think that was a sort of a possible. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that indeed. Um, I think we should bring it back for next season. We will work on that as we go along. Thank you very much, gents. Top work. Okay, I tell you what, let's have a quick delve, shall we, into the Norwich City archives for this week in Canaries history. Thank you. 
Let's bring you some of the messages if we can. Um, which I say is always a, a little bit problematic, but we'll get there. So uh, on the Facebook page, Canary Mary Watson. Hello there, Canary Mary Watson. Uh, I think all this about Bielsa is blown up a bit. What annoyed me was more the fact he did not appear to realise what he was not, what was, what he did was not acceptable in this country, regardless of what he and others do in other countries. Which, yeah, cultural ba- cultural differences is something that has come up as a as a bit of an explanation. So thanks for your post, uh, uh, Canary Mary. Um, Tim at Williams been in touch. Hello, Tim, friend of the show. We can get you on again too, uh, soon, Tim, please. Um, have those friendly Reading fans started joshing with you over the transfer of Nelson Oliveira? Not that I've noticed. I'm sure it's only a matter of time. I think they were, they were, they were in touch beforehand. Uh, I'm sure once the goals start raining in. In fairness, you know, this time it was going to happen. So there we go. I lose track of all the fans I've annoyed. <laughs> it's very difficult to keep track of them all, but they soon let me know, which is obviously brilliant. Um, how about on YouTube? Michael Dring. Glad people are starting to lay off cruel a bit. When we've won the league, like that, uh, I think we'll all look back and realise how instrumental he's been on and off the pitch. Uh, Will Hinsley getting difficult games out of the way in the next few weeks should make it easier to gain momentum from now until the end of the season, considering how well we have done against lower half teams, which is an interesting point because if you look to how Norwich's first half of the season progressed, obviously difficult start, difficult games, second half, certainly in that middle period of that first half, they motored on, didn't they? Motored. Yeah, yeah, fair point. Good point, that. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Like that. Uh, Matthew Palmer, how much do you read into Tommy Tribal? I guess pointing to the mum- number on his back after his goal. Not as extreme as what Nelson did. Shirt off, showing Farker. He certainly did. Uh, but the same intent? Question mark. I think. I mean, he's since said on Instagram it was a tribute to his wife. And he did the funny A thing. Do we know what the funny A thing is? No, I, I, I can't help thinking it's like a charitable cause in Germany. But I'm, I don't know. Tony's saying yes. And so... <laughs> Andy Johnson did, yeah, and uh, other people have done it as well. Ameza Erzil, I think, did it. So, really, I'm sure it's really important, uh, but I just don't know what it is. Um, so, that, yeah, we read much into it, or is it, you know, just look, I'm Tommy Tribal, I'm back playing again. You know, good on him. He hasn't really played this year, has he? Yeah, I mean, he's just been out of the team for so long. I think it's just he's just pleased to be back in as much as anything, not in a, a condescending way, but he's, um, you know, he took his chance against Birmingham as well. I thought he was excellent. So, yeah, I think it's just the man who's a bit frustrated that he wasn't playing as much as anything yeah, else. I, I, I think the best thing about Leitner coming back to fitness is Tom Tribal knowing he's going to have to play like that every week to keep him out of the team. Yeah. I think so. I think the difference between that and the Oliveira thing is as much as how many games it was into the season because the way Norwich's season has panned out, I don't think Tom Tribal can com- <coughs> complain about not playing. Mm. Whilst it was the first game with Nelson, he very much wanted to be the centre of everything. Yeah. Whilst Tom's waited for his chance, and he's um yeah, like I said, I thought he was very good against Birmingham. Top stuff, Ryan. Top stuff. Um, Keller Hare has been in touch on uh, YouTube. I think I'm looking at. Hopefully, Norwich will only get one more win over a Sheffield club this season. Guessing Keller Hare is a Wednesday fan, yeah, uh, or, or, or or United fan. Mm. Could be either. Um, we're completely neutral here, obviously, for yes, all clubs. Um, brilliant. Keep the messages coming in. We've got, I uh, don't know how long left, but not that long. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's have a look at this, shall we? Championship refresh. So, uh, as if to make us look even worse than last week, Norwich City are back in the top two, and we suddenly have all our graphics back. Uh, anyway, here is the championship picture as it stands heading into the weekend. As we've discussed, Norwich had a very good weekend, although West Brom made sure it wasn't perfect with a Monday win at Sorry Bolton. Leeds have now lost three of their last four league games while Ben Marshall helped Millwall claim a point at Middlesbrough. Ipswich lost at Blackburn and despite the hype they remain in dire straits. In fact there's probably only one game Paul Lambert wants to win before the season is done rather than a survival fight. Uh, Oliveira arrives at Reading looking to lift them out of the drop zone and away from relegation danger. 35 points is now the gap from town to City, who sits second, just a point behind the leaders. Albion overtook Sheffield United following the Blades' defeat at Swansea, while Bristol City and Hull now lead the chase to break into the top six. The FA Cup fourth round means a reduced weekend programme. West Brom, Derby and Borough are among the sides with a league break, while Leeds have a derby at Rotherham and Ipswich take on the Villa at Villa Park. Oliveira will be primed for his debut on Tuesday night. That's a lot of Nelson Oliveira talk we've got through tonight. Uh, at least there's something to talk about this time, so that's good. Uh, fascinating period, isn't it, coming up for Norwich City, especially when you look at the table. Um, it's interesting, and I think you'll see some of this in, in uh, pinkand.com and in the papers. Norwich's record against the top six is actually pretty poor so far this year. That's kind of been where they've dropped all their points. Yeah, no, I, I, 
math speak for themselves, themselves really, get, get that out eventually. Yeah, that's right. um, but then after the next couple of weeks, they only have Middl Middlesbrough, right? They've played Derby twice, and the other teams have been done with. So it's a good chance in these next two or three games, if you pick up as many points as you can, then you should, in theory, have a clear run. But anyone can turn up on any given day in this league. It's a cliche because it's it's true. You know, anyone can turn up and beat anyone. But it's they can come out of these next two games relatively unscathed. I think you can really then hopefully take it a bit easy. I don't know if easy is the word, but... <laughs> Just rack up all the points, probably be good. I mean, it's interesting because I'll sit here and say these next two games, if Norwich don't lose either of them, I see that as pretty decent. But, but likewise, we've always talked about the mini league being really important. So I, I guess ultimately it's, it's all about so much as we're still so far out from the end of the season, aren't we? Well, I mean, we, we would have wanted this, haven't we? We've wanted this again for so long. We've got it now. And uh, I, I honestly think we can win all three of them. I, I don't see why we can't win all three. As it, you're including the Ipswich game in that, aren't you? Yes, oh, all three. We're not Nine talking points. about that game yet. No way. Um, and that's the thing, though. I suppose if we do look at Norwich and feel that they can, they, they do look a really good side. Yeah. You, you would feel yeah. that. Um, it was interesting against West Brom. That was probably one of the one games where they come up, come get away from home and they were under a bit of pressure at mm. the end of a game, which hasn't happened mm. a lot this year. So I guess that maybe underlines uh, how far they've still got to come. They were a little bit nervous in the first part of that game as well. So ultimately, that will probably stand them in good stead that they've kind of got that out of their system a little bit a big game a big start and they survived it yeah I mean if you're going to go up you need to perform in these in these big games and admittedly West Brom they were, I thought they were quite poor for 55 60 minutes or so but then they dug in there managed to get the equaliser and this this I think this Saturday is a big big opportunity as much as anything because West Brom aren't playing either so if you win this you've got a chance to go six points clear or six points safe in the automatic then you overtake Sheffield United on goal difference and that plays a factor as well and yeah, they against the top teams. They've struggled, but again, a win on Saturday. I think you can really then that brushes under the carpet in many ways. Two fascinating games coming up. I really can't wait. It's some really exciting stuff. Uh, we always like to just talk about Ipswich at this point, probably more so than in past seasons. Uh, how do you? F I mean, it's interesting. Marcus Evans has done some talking, hasn't he, today on, the, on their official site, saying, "Oh, when, uh, the club's not for sale." unless someone you know does want to take it on so it probably then is still for sale if someone the right person comes along but it does kind of underline the sort of muddled direction that's going on down there and are you slightly surprised both of you by the um atmosphere around the place because paul lambert's clearly on a massive pr exercise they seem to be bigging up how positive things are now yet his record is worse than paul Hurst's was and he obviously got the sack I think to a certain extent they've taken a leaf out of our book, haven't they, with this sudden interaction that they're having with the fans on all, all aspects of the media. I mean, they've, they've, they've taken one of our ex-managers, they've, they've been looking at our ex-players, although Pilkington didn't want to go there, so kudos to him for that. And now they seem to be aping the Norwich approach of communicating with the fans and telling the fans how special they are and all that, so I, I think we should be flattered, quite honestly, at their approach. Mm. Yeah, second that really it, it, it's a strange situation with them because it, no matter what they're throwing at it they don't seem to be mm. quite there yet yes I know they've got the win against Rotherham but then it's one step back when they go to Blackburn and don't really turn up and the signings they're making as well are okay signings for this level but it's more it feels like signings for the sake of experience to get again the fans on side again to seem like they are doing something but they're not quite doing enough and I just feel that I don't mean this because it's Ipswich but any team in that situation you go I think it's a bit too got far gone at this stage because what are they seven points now off eight eight off it it's can you see them winning three games in a row even if the other three teams above them lose not really no. to be I honest with you honestly think it's entirely about the derby <laughs> which is why I'm quite uh, worried about it but of course uh, that will look after itself when it comes along we're still not going to talk about it just yet uh, let's get some messages shall we uh, Blair Boy says hello everyone from a warm sunny Florida just rubbing it in there aren't yeah, you nice but I uh, hope, <laughs> hope it's lovely uh, Adcock Ivy says somebody's shirking their round don't know who that is certainly not me um, possibly um, and uh, Mark Stannard says love listening from Saudi Arabia used to work on the turnstiles as a teenager presumably at Carrow Road great to hear from you Mark thanks for the message uh, and I think that's all of the ones on there and then I was just going to mention one on YouTube Timothy Githinji I have a strong strong feeling we will win this now that could be the title it could be the game. Let's assume it's everything. Thank you for your message, Timothy. Right. Uh, it is Chris Wilder and Sheffield United on Saturday, 3 p.m. 
This is big, isn't it, gents? Sheffield United. I remember, I have to admit, it wasn't until they overtook Norwich in the table the other week that I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to start taking them seriously as top two contenders because I haven't really seen it. And they've always looked, you know, they do some things really well, but maybe not quite at the same level as a Leeds, West Brom, maybe Middlesbrough as well. But are, are, are they serious contenders? They are because they're a, they're an old-fashioned championship side. They're 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 strong. They're big. They're big on pace. They press. They're physical. So I can see why they're doing well. And they've got good championship players. And the manager who gets them fired up, he's a bit of a Lambert, really. <laughs> he's done a brilliant job, Chris Wilder. For anyone who wants to um, take a dislike to him for various reasons, understandable. Um, he, he, you know, they, there's a lot that you'd, you'd love to have him in your dugout you as would. your manager, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. And likewise, I mean, they play three at the back. They play slightly differently to everyone else. They have a wonderful fluidity about them. And actually, they do play some really productive football. It's not just hoof it down the channels. They, they work it really cleverly. They're not, they're not a stupid side. They're quite an awkward challenge. Yeah, of course. They, they have the ability as well to change up as much as anything. I did see some of their fans complain that their plan B wasn't quite good enough, but they've got, you know, if they have to go direct, they can go direct. If they, right? <laughs> if you have to play it, if they have to play it about, they can, you know, they can play it about quite nicely. I think they've, arguably on paper, um, player for player I think uh, really Sheffield United and Norwich are perhaps the the weaker of the top six but it's it's what they do as a group which counts and yeah. the, this season they've Sheffield United have got this nice balance between being resilient and also affecting teams you know when, when they have to and that happened at the um, at Bramall Lane earlier in the season again I know they lost at Swansea last week but that's every team's going to lose at some point and I think they are in the top six for a reason and I'd say they have to be taken very seriously yeah and I think they're very together there I think they've got almost a siege mentality going on haven't they um, of course we're Sheffield United we're not one of the fancy teams and and yeah I've got a lot of time for them and it will be a tough a tough game and they will they will come at us they're not going to sit back we know that I mean if there's one thing I've learned in recent years is that teams supporters do tend to carry a chip on their shoulder um, and Oliver God I'd like to make the point thoughts on Sheffield United Sheffield United's Norwich chant which of course is take your time take your time take your time um, Sheffield United playing football the Norwich way which is in in relation to the fact that Norwich won at Bramall Lane a couple of years ago of course and Sheffield United have kind of I managed to uh, pick up a couple since then. I think Norwich owe them for both of those. But um, if Sheffield United play football the Norwich way on Saturday, there will be gorgeous football and they'll win by you know, in, yeah. in, an ultimate entertainment, yes. regardless of all the time wasting. So there we go. It's all, all fun, all good banter. Obviously, I'm, I'm still getting myself in trouble, aren't I? Um, in terms of United's key threats, I mean, they've got some really good players at this level, haven't they? Billy, Billy Sharp. Is, is a goal machine if you like David McGoldrick is fit which is something he never quite managed at Ipswich and, and of course John Fleck um, is he nephew to Robert is that Robert's right nephew. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. A proper connection <laughs> yeah I mean like I said good good championship players if you go up you think are they good enough but that doesn't matter now it's what the here and now is what matters and they are all good players Okay, brilliant stuff. Let's have a look at the 11s that these two would opt to play. This is going to be quite quick because A, we haven't got the injury issues and uh, B, Norwich have done quite well recently, which always makes this form, this section, a little bit redundant. Uh, who should we go to first, Dan? Ryan, here's your 11. Um, it's not a surprise, is it? No, unchanged from the Birmingham game. Uh, it's so good in the first half and the way they moved the ball about as well. And I'm hoping that Emi Buendia will be fit because it was a dead leg, wasn't it? Mm. He went off with, and I'd imagine he would be back for. And he's because he had a hand in all the goals on Friday as well, didn't he? So I think if he's in the team as much as anything, I think Sheffield United. I wouldn't be surprised actually if they were to go 4-2-3-1 on Saturday because I think the way uh, Buendia comes into the middle as well, um, the two sitting for Sheffield United will just get outnumbered by. Buendia, Hernandez and, and Co. But that's just my sixpence. It might be wrong. but uh, that, would be a, that would be a big call and would be very interesting. Likewise, Wilder might look at last year and think, well, we did it last year with three at the back. We can do it this year. Uh, Ed, let's have a look at your 11. People will realise it's the same. It's the same again, yeah. And I think Stieperman's probably the key man on Saturday. Oh. Um, because he's, he's, he's an athlete, you know, he's strong. He'll, he'll run at them. And I think he'll, I think he'll take a lot of the attention away from Pookie. And again, how those two work together, yeah. I think a lot of Tamu Pookie's success this season owes to Marco Stiepelman and, and, and the way, well, uh, the wonderful chemistry they have as yeah. two players. Um, I think you might be all right with Emi Buendia on Saturday, Ryan. Just a little line for you there. Uh, okay, brilliant stuff. Um, well, I'm sure that will be pretty close to the side we see. Uh, no more injury issues withstanding. 
final two questions then. Key man and a prediction for Saturday's game against Sheffield United. Go on, Ed. Uh, steeper man, key man, 2 1 win. Yes. Wendia yes. and 2 1. I go 2 1 as well. Oh, that would make me very happy indeed. It would make all of us very happy. That is it from this week's Pinkin Show. I remember you can catch up with tonight's edition and all our superb Norwich City coverage on all our platforms, including the Pinkin app. But first and foremost, pinkin.com. Um, I'm actually going to enjoy a weekend off on Saturday. So it's Paddy Davitt and Dave Freezer, uh, who you'll need to keep tabs on for our big build up, team news live, and behind the scenes coverage, reaction, and analysis. And if you see them around, of course, say hello to them for the record. I am in the Lower Barclay on Saturday, so I will be Whereabouts? on my best behaviour. Yeah, e block, e block, e block, e block nice. at the back. Nice. So I think that is flag, prime flag it territory. Flag territory. Um, yeah. Please don't swear at me. That's always nice. And uh, I will wave a flag, I'm sure. <laughs> Why not? Uh, we will return next Wednesday, once again at 6pm live from the Woolpack on Golden Ball Street in the centre of Norwich with all the usual Canaries fun and games. So please join us then, be it in flesh come down to the pub if you want down and buy your drink uh, or of course online in the meantime I think that was a yes uh, a big thank you to our guests tonight to Ed and to Ryan gents you enjoy it fabulous thank you very much thank you so much yeah. it's always a question to put you on the spot thank you so much for coming in really appreciate it uh, don't forget Ed's quiz question as well can you remember what it was Ed yeah the four goalkeepers who have played for both Norwich and Sheffield United since the 1980s brilliant get your answers into that question you can win a copy of one of Ed's books we'll sort out uh, the selection you can choose from and you can say it's signed if you want Dan's got the strap if he wants to put that on again but email your answers to thepinken at archant.co.uk and the competition will close come kick off on Saturday continue with the thank yous to the Woolpack of course for letting us uh, in which is always good to the two gentlemen who <laughs> enjoy walking through the show we'll have to get them on the show next time um, uh, to Dan and to Tony who are our brilliant crew as always and of course to you guys and girls for watching and getting involved it wouldn't be the same without you uh, we will see you again next week until then here's the City giving the Blades one of the two they owe them as far as I'm concerned, and away from the Canaries' own fortunes, here's to Nelson Oliveira, quite literally the football riddle wrapped in a Norwich City enigma. Yeah. Good night. Thank you.